The knives are out for Chris Pappas, the Democratic Alliance's candidate for Premier in Kwezidun Natal. He is with us now. Welcome, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a while. Chris, both the public protector and the speaker of your, your municipality have been asked to investigate charges of nepotism. What are you telling them? They are welcome to investigate. I've got nothing to hide. The documents are ready and waiting. Um, the speaker has actually already investigated a couple of months ago um, uh, after receiving a complaint that was received by a copter. Um, she sent through all the documents at that stage, and usually, like copter does, there was there was no response. So the story that they are raising and the issues that they are talking about have long been uh, dealt with in our municipality. Um, in fact, we had we had journalists in the meetings. Uh, where these issues were discussed, and they were, you know, they had the documents and they they saw the discussions, and it made it onto page three or four of the, the witness, which is a local paper here, and then the freebie community paper. I don't think even covered it, um, because there were, there was nothing there. So the speakers looked at it. Now, I'm waiting for the public protector. I still haven't received any communication from them, uh, or him or her, but there's nothing at the moment. But I've got nothing to hide. Um, the timing of these allegations is is questionable. Um, you know, a week after you get announced as premier, and I think that's just because I'm I'm, I'm a threat. Um, so I say bring it on. I'm you know I've, I'm expecting things like this, uh, and it's uh, it's it's good. It's, it's good that they are scared. It's good that small mayor, as they call me, um, is making them terrified. Please tell us what the latest polling data shows, and whether you think that is a realistic projection. So I think the polling data said forty four percent. Forty four. So yes, yeah, forty four percent to the to the IFP DA coalition, and forty six percent to the EFF ANC coalition. Okay. Uh, so it's neck on neck. It's very close, and that's from the Social uh, Social Research Foundation. And yeah, absolutely, um, you know, when there, there's 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 the maths of of it, and that's polling, and we, we must you know seriously look at that as as credible. Uh, opinions, but the sentiment on the ground is is, is incredible. Uh, there's, you know, I, I was at a at a, a meeting with uh, um, a whole lot of CEOs last night. It was a, a, a dinner, and just people who would have never been outspoken about politics are now speaking out about politics in communities where have they've been traditionally in strongholds of you know the ANC. People are 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 speaking out um, very much more aggressively. Than they have before, so I, I'm confident that this province, you know, this is actually the political playground for for 2024 elections. Uh, the Western Cape, I think, well, will will remain in DA hands. Um, you know, we need to fight hard for it, but we need to make sure that that we, we keep that. Uh, Gauteng is going to be uh, a lot of competition, and it's going to be you know the coalition that comes out of there is going to be very interesting. But KZN, because we have far few smaller political parties, and we have reasonably Big political parties in the middle is going to be in a, a, an important place to to watch. More importantly, because we are the engine room of South African politics. Uh, you know what? What when when we sneeze, everyone catches a cold. If I can use use it that way, I'm not sure if, if COVID is too far away for us to be using those sorts of um, analogies. But we we drive the political narrative in the country. And when when KZN changes hands, and when K, things happen in KZN politics. It affects the the rest of the country, uh, and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. There are more municipalities in this province that are run by um, the the IFP and, and the DA than there are municipalities run by the ANC. Uh, the South African Local Government Association (SALGA) um, changed hands. It was in the hands of the the ANC majority, and now it's in the hands of an IFP DA majority. So all across the province, these these changes are systematically taking place. Uh, and I think 2024 um, is going to be equally as exciting. What would your priorities be after next year's election? So the first one, and it's never, you know, never the sexy one that that people want to to hear about, um, is is the is the government finances. Uh, we we currently sitting around about a six or seven billion rand deficit um, as a province, and we have to find that money somewhere, and that usually comes from cutting service delivery. So we have to make sure that we get our our, our provincial finances in in check. Everything else stems from from that. The next thing is again something that's it's not seen by by the people, and that is uh, cater deployment. Um, undoing what is what has been systematically destroyed by cater deployment. People are unqualified 
um, or, or, un, or inexperienced to do the work. But then, of course, uh, citizens want to see real service delivery, you know, pipes going in the ground, uh, police vehicles, all of those sorts of things. So I think there are some some quick wins that we can deal with as a province that would catapult a number of different things. So the the lowest hanging fruit that we have is is tourism. Uh, now tourism can help to revitalize our, our small towns out there in the province that have largely collapsed. Uh, it can help to create jobs in rural areas where there are very few opportunities other than tourism and and agriculture. And it can stop, help stop this inward migration to our bigger urban areas, which obviously then puts incredible pressure there. But importantly is that the provincial government has an executive function over, uh, to do oversight over local government. Now, we have many, many local governments that are failing. So one of my key priorities in getting into government would be to march into uh, Mayor Kawunda, then Eteguini, into his office place that municipality under administration and start to turn our biggest metro uh, and 60% of our provincial economy around. The same with Nsunduzi and the same with a number of other municipalities that are, are unable to deliver basic services. And we have that power as provincial government. It's just not being used because people don't want to take action against their own uh, their own party members. Um, and then, of course, the, the biggest slice of the budget for the provincial government is healthcare and education. Any society, uh, the, the, the first thing that you need to get right is education, uh, and we are failing dismally at that. Uh, and then the next thing is to have a, a healthy population, people who, who can readily access good health care. Um, so there's a, there are billions and billions of rands spent on those two departments, uh, but they sort of become endless pits um, of, of contracts on contracts and friends and nepotism and inefficiencies that need to be to be resolved. What has been the secret of your success in your own municipality? When Mr. Uh, John Steenhuisen announced your, you as the candidate for Premier, he said that you had turned your municipality into a beacon on the hill. So he was very kind and generous with the words, and I do appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, we've still got a lot of problems. We've only been in government, I think it's now 23 months, 23 months in government, and we, we, we're trying to, to undo 28 years worth of, of issues, backlogs, finances, you know, all the rest of it. But I think what there's a couple of things that are, are key to what we're trying to do. So the first is to, is to build partnerships. Um, you know, go government and the private sector, government and civil society shouldn't be opposed or in opposition to each other. They shouldn't, or we shouldn't be uh, trying to achieve different things. We must be working together uh, for our communities. And what you find currently is that there's an animosity between government and the private sector or government and civil society. And if you're not ANC aligned, then you are the enemy. And we've sort of taken politics out of partnership building, and that's been a very important part of what we're doing. The second thing is vision, stability, and uh, vision, st vision and stability. Um, no business is going to invest in an area that is uh, unstable or where government says one thing and does another thing. Residents don't feel safe or hopeful in an area where government says one thing and does another thing. So we've tried to to be consistent in creating stability in our area in terms of governance, putting good municipal um, uh, public servants in, in place, making sure that we are transparent, making sure that we are consistent in what we do. And then having a vision that is not just our own, you know, so it's not a DA vision, it's not, it's not Chris Puppis's vision, it's a community vision. Um, you know, we, we spend a lot of time and effort with public participation, and it's not just filling halls and giving people food parcels. It's constant engagement and feedback, criticism, ideas, and then we try and actually action those through through the municipal budget, through our municipal programs of action, which is very, very, very important because the ethos that, that, that we have here is that our municipality is an instrument of the community. It is, it is It does not belong to any one mayor or any one political party. It is Mgeni residents, Mgeni businesses, uh, biggest asset, and it needs to work in the interests of everyone. When I leave, and you know, in fifty years' time, when when uh, I'm, I'm five foot under, this institution will still exist and must still be delivering for rich, poor, urban, rural, black, white, whoever it is. And we've got to build that resilience into an institution so that it becomes depoliticized and it actually becomes professional. Now, you are in a hot seat in a province that's synonymous with political killings. Have you received any death threats? Do you live in fear? I have received threats. Um, not, no direct death threats so far, but lots of, lots of threats. You know, we're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with you. We're coming to find you. We're going to hurt you. You know, that, those I get 
it's the you know sort of the, the the trashy part of social media as well as that people can say what they want with without any consequence um but besides from social media yes i, I do um i also get intelligence have networks uh, within the ANC, within different areas, and I get the information when when there are threats. Um, it is it is a uh, it is a province, as you say, where it has to be taken seriously. I am possibly more naive about it than I can see. Um, my, my my communications manager is standing here behind me, and she's shaking her she's shaking her head because um, she's always wagging her finger at me about my, my safety. Um, but I suppose yes, the reality is that. There are there've been you know over 120 killings in this province of of politicians I think since 2019. You can correct me on my facts there if I'm wrong, but it's it's uh, when you're a threat and when there's money involved and when there's power and positions involved and you do not have law and order and the criminal justice system is largely dysfunctional um, and the value for life and and moral engagement has deteriorated to where it is then you do have 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 the situation that i'm sitting in at the moment but you also can't let that you can't let that deter you um you know one of one of the key messages that i'm going to be telling people over the next seven months uh, is to have courage you have courage uh you need courage as a business to publicly stand up and say government is failing and i'm having to fire people and move and close down because of the ANC government, and you have to say that as business, and have the courage to say that. It takes courage to to be a, a person living in a township where the ANC uses their power to intimidate people to stand up and say, "I'm voting for change." Um, and I can't expect people out there to to have courage if if I don't have it myself. Uh, and you have to deal with these things he- the, these things head on, because if not now, when? Lastly, what do you have to say for? The people have been attacking you of late, and you may say that first in English and then in Zulu. So, a lot of the people that that are attacking me when when you when you follow them, or you you see who they are. A, a lot of them are either you know government officials and communications or EPWP jobs and 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 people who are, are have been deployed in in the ANC. Um, so to them, um, I don't really need to talk to them, and um, they must carry on doing what they're doing to destroy the country and the province. But who I think I should be talking to are good South Africans out there. Now, if you take someone in in rural KZN and you ask her to write a, a thing with 10 points that are important to her for the future of South Africa, and then you take someone who lives in, in suburban Durban and they must write 10 points of things that are important for them for the future of uh, our province, on Either of those, you'll find more things that are the same than that are different. So my point here is that we must stop letting politicians, you know, split us or divide us um, because of things that are important, but that are not urgent. So questions around race are important, but not urgent. Questions around, um, you know, reform are important, but not urgent. Things that are important and urgent our, our jobs, healthcare, um, education, those sorts of things. And South Africans need to critically analyze what it is on offer and what different political parties and their candidates are offering. So, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going and Ukuluma, eh, ukuma, ugletu ushinjo, faniluba nesbit. Gova, inde bayazi ubon usabi sabandu, ba, ba ne violence, yon inde bayazi uper. So faniluba nesbit indi, ngo 2024, uma ufun bona ushinjo rangi mpele e in ingizim Afrika, nala nisfundazi usagwa zunu natak. Thank you. That was Chris Papas.
the Democratic Alliance's candidate for Premier for Kazula Natal speaking to Biz News. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, Chris. 